Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, hope you're having a wonderful day. So, we're talking about the V-22 Osprey, what a beautiful and very unique aircraft. You can't really call it a plane, you can't really call it a helicopter, it's a bit of both, a bit of the in-between. But it's a very, very, very cool thing to be looking at when it flies, you know, the way in which it operates is something that's quite specialised. And in the age of specialization, the Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey stands apart from many other aircraft around the world. The V-22, which is a joint service program, covers the basis for a number of different missions. The aircraft is a tilt-rotor vertical short takeoff and landing, otherwise known as VSTOL or VSTOL. It is a multi-mission aircraft developed to fill a multi-service combat operational requirement. The V-22 is the first airplane program to be designed from the ground up to meet the requirements of all four services – Marines, Navy, Air Force and Army for the United States military. Consequently, the needs of one service would frequently be the driving force behind a certain design feature. For example, the Air Force had a requirement for the airplane to go 700 nautical miles with 12 troops at 1,000 feet altitude. And that was the deciding factor in sizing the power plant and the beautiful drivetrain of these 6,000 shaft horsepower class engines. And because of the Navy and the Marine Corps needing the airplane to operate from the Tarara class assault ships or LHAs, the rotor size was set at 38 feet to clear the ship's superstructures, although a 43 foot diameter would otherwise have been more efficient. Also, because of the need to operate these fairly large airplanes, nearly 58 feet long and almost 47 feet wide from rotor hub to rotor hub from the ships, a unique wing rotor fold system was also developed to save space and to ensure ease of movement. This system involves the rotor blades folding inward. The nacelles bring the rotation down and the entire wing being turned 90 degrees clockwise when looked at from above on the airplane. Once stowed, the port nacelle will hang in the front of the cockpit, while the starboard nacelle will rest in the front of the horizontal stabilizer and twin rudders. The Navy and Marine aircraft accomplish this wing stow by means of an automatic system, and the entire process only takes about 90 seconds. The Air Force version, which is being planned as being an upgrade in the near future as well, will include a 90 inch diameter stainless steel ring that the wing rotates on, but the stow system will still be manually operated on this aircraft. The V-22 is the first major airplane project to be designed entirely actually on a computer, with computer-aided design. Engineers were freed from having to draw a multitude of blueprints and could easily make changes in the design. Another great advantage to the CAD system is that it allows designers at Boeing Vertol's plant in Philadelphia to communicate instantaneously with their brethren in Bell Helicopters Textron Fort Worth, Texas facility. This is very key when trying to design aircraft because back and forth can take quite a bit of time. The two companies have split the work of the V-22, with Boeing Vertel being responsible for the fuselage and the overwing fairing and the systems integration, and Bell is building the wing, the cells, transmission and rotor and hub assemblies, and is also handling the integration of the Allison T-406 AD-400 engines. These engines are a derivative of the T-56 engines that power the Grumman C-2 Alpha and E-2C and the Lockheed C-130 and P-3 aircraft. Osprey is also the first major military aircraft design whose airframe will be made up of entirely composites. Slightly more than 6,000 pounds of the aircraft's almost 13,200 pound structure will be made of graphite epoxy laminates, which is about a quarter of the weight of aluminum slash aluminium. And because of the buoyant fuel sponsons, the V-22 will have good flotation characteristics in the event of having to ditch at sea, which of course when working on flight decks, it's something that could happen at any second. There's only about a thousand pounds of metal in the airframe and most of that comes in the form of perforated copper that's laminated to outer skin panels for lightning protection. Bell and Boeing entered full-scale development of the V-22 program in earnest of May 1986 after the Naval Air Systems Command or NAVAIR awarded two companies of $1.7 billion seven-year fixed price incentive contracts. When engine development is included, the total contract value came to close to $2.5 billion. One part of the V-22 contract was that it was the first military procurement program that Boeing and Bell would each pay roughly $300 million in terms of tooling costs. The Navy paid the other third of the costs. Tools and jigs themselves are quite unique in the way that they're made for composites as well, although they were not made for the same process for the V-22's components. The two companies though began limited FSDs with their own funds in June 1985 in order to keep up with the Navy's development schedule. In addition, Boeing Vertol alone has invested $200 million in upgraded and expanded facilities in the many years past in preparation work for the V-22. 
The limited FSD work came after the completion of two pre-designed stages that began in April 1983 and May 1984 respectively. The first pre-designed stage demonstrated to the government that the V-22 was a low-risk program. The longest wind tunnel test program in history, 6,600 hours, was also undertaken during this time. The second pre-designed stage included testing of components and the designing of a long lead time items. During the second stage, the Allison engine was chosen as the winner of the competition that also included a Pratt & Whitney, which was recently chosen as the second source engine contractor and General Electric. As part of the FSD effort, class 3 or full scale mock-ups were made to check the fit and function of various subsystems. The Osprey is truly a 21st century flying machine and it incorporates several features more common to commercial aircraft than military. For the military pilot, this can be a difficult concept to grasp as most military aircraft allow the pilot to utilize the entire range of the systems and flight envelopes up to the point of failure. The Osprey is based on the principle that restricts the pilot from breaking the aircraft. The FADEX system on the engine controls hot starts and surges and also stops the pilot from causing an over or over situation, which is usually a very good thing, but sometimes an over and over is better than outcome than destroying the aircraft completely. Structural load limiting is another feature that essentially does not allow the pilot to over-G the Osprey. This can spell disaster if a dive recovery isn't initiated with enough altitude because the Osprey will only allow the pilot to pull back on the stick to a G limit. These aircraft protection features have led to another common quote among Osprey pilots, that they are only voting members when it comes to how the aircraft flies, with the flight control computers and their various components having the ultimate say. That being said, the flight envelope of the Osprey is ever expanding as more aircraft data is being collected today. Despite the widespread belief that the Osprey was in development for over 25 years, the truth is that very limited experience was gained on it due to the constant stop and start drama of the program. Basic flight characteristics were gleaned, but testing stopped well short of fully exploring the envelope of the aircraft. This only really began in the mid-2000s timeframe. By then, the Osprey was in full production, showing up on the ramps of various squadrons, and the community struggled to catch up and exploit on the capabilities of the V-22. Only in the past couple of years has the Osprey truly started showing its promise. The result of better understanding of how to fly the aircraft is key to this. In a sense, Osprey still re represents some more of a testbed tilt-a-rotor technology than a full realization of its possibilities. Not the best example, mind you, but a dramatic step towards what could be truly a revolutionary mode of flight. Only time will tell if the instrumental maturity of the tilt-a-rotor technology will be a sole example of it in history. There are newer examples of tilt-a-rotor aircraft coming out that are going to come a lot more apparent in the near future with more advanced technology to make this concept even more of a reality for the future. Most people think of the Osprey as a rotorcraft, but the majority of V-22 pilots' flight time is spent thinking flying and operating an airplane environment type aircraft. Consequently, the V-22 should be more precisely categorized as an airplane that just happens to take off and land vertically, or better yet, as a official VTOL or vertical takeoff and landing airplane. Funnily enough, even the United States Federal Aviation Administration's official powered lift categorization of the Osprey is very misleading, because it implies that the lift is always produced by the rotors, when in fact, this is only a small portion of the flight profile. The MV-22 will replace the current Marine Corps assault helicopters in the medium lift category, or the CH-46E and the CH-53D, contributing to the dominant maneuver of the Marine landing force, as well as the supported focused logistics in the days following commencements of an amphibious operation. The Air Force variant, the CV-22, will replace the MH-53J and the MH-60G and augment the MC-M-130 fleet in the US SOCOM Special Operations missions. The Air Force requires the CV-22 to provide a long-range VTOL insertion and extraction capability. The tilt-rotor design combines the vertical flight capabilities of a helicopter with the speed and range of a turboprop airplane and permits aerial refueling and worldwide self-deployment. Two 6,150 shaft horsepower turboshaft engines each drive the 38 feet diameter three-bladed prop rotor. The prop rotors are connected to each other by interconnect shafting which maintains prop rotor synchronization and provides single engine power to both prop rotors in the event of an engine failure. The engines and the flight controls are controlled by a triply redundant digital fly-by-wire system. The airframe is constructed primarily of graphite reinforced epoxy composite material. The composite structure will provide improved strength to weight ratio, corrosion resistance and damage tolerance compared to typical metal construction. 
battle damage tolerance is built into the aircraft by means of composite construction and redundant and separated flight control, electrical and hydraulic systems. With the speed and range of a turboprop, the maneuverability of the helicopter and the ability to carry 24 marine combat troops twice as fast and five times farther than previous helicopters, the Osprey enhances the marine assault operation. Its impact was felt immediately upon its arrival in Iraq. Commenting on its advanced expeditionary capabilities and staggering operational reach, the top marine commander at the time went as far to say it turned his battle space from, quote, from the size of Texas into the size of Rhode Island, unquote. The Osprey program did face several development challenges, however, since its first flight in 1989, including several crashes during tests that resulted in 30 deaths. But the Navy and the Marine Corps developed new flight techniques and enhanced systems before it was first deployed to Iraq in support of marine operations in Anbar province, and the aircraft has proven safer than many rotor ring aircraft in the fleet. However, it still has been in the news and in the papers many times in the past for other recent crashes that have happened with this aircraft. Of course, there's a lot of technicalities to how these accidents happen, but the Osprey seems to always be in the spotlight due to the configuration of the way the aircraft works. I myself must say that being in this aircraft would be a little uh, nerve-wracking, considering it's using two principles combined together, and the bit in between is the bit that scares me as it transitions between sort of helicopter mode to turboprop plane mode, but still a very unique aircraft. Interestingly, the MV-22 also provides transport for White House staff as part of the HMX-1 Presidential Squadron. The aircraft's electronic warfare suite includes the atk an aar 47 missile warning system, which consists of four electro-optic sensors with photomultipliers and a signal processing unit and cockpit display. The aircraft is also equipped with a radar and infrared threat warning system and chaff and flare dispensers with 60 rounds of dispensables. In terms of armament, the aircraft is armed with a N240G 7.62mm machine gun mounted on the back ramp. In January 2008, BAE Systems was awarded a contract by the US SOCOM for a rapid development and installation of a remotely operated gun turret for the MV-22, based on the Remote Guardian System or RGS which provides 360 degree coverage. The RGS is a belly mounted system on the MV-22 and is armed with a GAU-17 7.62mm machine gun. BA Systems installed the first system on the CV-22 in February 2008 for ground and flight testing. There are a total of around 112 Osprey V-22s which are currently operated by the United States Air Force, US Marine Corps, US Navy and US Army Special Operations Command. The tilt rotor aircraft is available in three configurations, the Combat Assault and Assault Support MV-22 for the US Marine Corps and the US Army, the Long Range Special Operations CV-22 for the US Special Operations Command or US SOCOM, the US Navy HV-22 for the Combat Search and Rescue Special Warfare and Fleet Logistics Support Systems, and overall the V-22 is still today being upgraded in its new configuration which has not actually been fully released yet as they're still developing the program. Amazingly, the V-22 hit its milestone of 100,000 flight hours in March 2011. In June 2011, the Israeli Air Force unveiled the decision to send its team to the US for evaluating the V-22 Osprey. The IAF will acquire V-22s to carry out search and rescue and special covert operations. And the Osprey will replace the IAF's aging fleet of Sikorsky CH-53 Sea Stallion support helicopters. So there you have it folks, the V-22 Osprey. Quite a complicated and complex machine, but what a beautiful one. The mere fact that it can turn into a turboprop aircraft from a helicopter, you know, short takeoff and landing, has given huge capabilities to the US military throughout the years. Uh, the US Marine Corps heavily involved with using it. You know, I have heard a lot of stories about people utilizing these aircraft on their operational deployments. Uh, some of them not so fond of it, some of them absolutely love it. Uh, I would love to have a ride on one of them at one point. I did get to see a couple of them actually uh, here in my local town where we had a uh, air show here and it was incredible to see them. The Marines very uh, much advocating for the aircraft and enjoyed the fact that it was still in the fleet. It would be nice to see the future of this aircraft and what's going to happen to it. I know there is some modified programs coming out soon that are very much, um, you know, the tilt rotor system. And you never know, this may be the future of all helicopters. We may not have, you know, normal helicopter programs in the near future. They may just go all to this kind of system if they can really refine and, and perfect this kind of technology. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy, I would really appreciate you uh, leave me a like by hitting the little thumb button. 
Uh, also, if you want to uh, be notified of any upcoming videos, please feel free to hit the little bell button by the subscribe button. I appreciate each and everybody of you stopping by today just to watch the video, but if you do want to support the channel further, you may go check out my Patreon page, which is in the description box below. And any donations and support to that page is much appreciated from me on every level. I cannot tell you how much uh, I am grateful for each and every, every one of you for supporting me on that site and throughout any other support that you've been putting towards my channel. If you uh, want to help support my CVRT fund, which is my crowd fund, for procuring my own uh, CVRT, which is Combat Vehicle Reconnaissance Tracked Vehicle, that I want to uh, get for myself to showcase on the channel. You can also go check out my crowdfund, which is in the description box below. A bit of a meme that's kind of taken off. A lot of people have been, uh, you know, donating towards that. So thank you, everyone, for doing so. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. All the best, everyone. Bye-bye.